Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trufinet, the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Trumbreaker the Witcher Tales. We're still in Angren, in the, uh, well, horrifying part of the swamp. That's probably under the rule of Gurney Cora herself, the and there we go. in silence, too tired to keep in step with the drums. Suddenly, the wind rose to a howl, and there was a loud crash of thunder. Blast! Meave leapt from her saddle. We camp here. Pitch the tents, quickly! Quickly! As the soldiers rushed to unload the wagons, a wall of water came down, soaking them to the bone. Later, they sat in their leaky tents, huddled, teeth chattering, violent coughs rocking their frames. The storm raged the night through, then finally passed before dawn. Meave emerged from her tent to wring out her coat. Raynard approached, his gait heavy, his face grim. Your Majesty, Several men of the 11th, a dozen or so, sought to flee last night. Sentries stopped and bound them. Now they await your judgment. Okay. Meave fastened her still wet coat. She knew well why the men had tried to desert. They longed for their kin, had lost sight of victory. Perhaps even no longer believed. Yet the marching and fighting seemed destined to go on forever. The Queen sympathized. She, too, was spent, and many doubts plagued her. Yet she knew the deserters had to be punished. The question was, to what extent? Meave entered the tent where the prisoners stood. Some of the men looked away, ashamed at their deed. Others raised their gazes to meet hers, their eyes red, tearful, pleading. Okay. The moat the deserter and would hold their pay or hang every third deserter. Well, since we really know why they're doing this, I mean, the situation is really dire. We're in a hell of a pickle. But uh, we still have a chance, I feel like. So let's just demote the deserters and would hold their pay. You all know the penalty for desertion. Meave said to the soldiers bound at wrist and foot. I ought to have every last one of you hanged. Yet... We've come far along a treacherous road, endured hardships extreme. This I considered against your crime. You shall lose rank and receive no pay for one year. Now get out of my sight, immediately! The deserters mumbled their gratitude and rushed out of the tent, fearing the Queen might yet change her mind. Meave then left for her quarters, anger and bitterness eating her up from the inside. No, uh, no need to be angry about that, of course. We know why they're doing this, and, well, she might have changed her mind. Wouldn't put this past that game, this game. Uh, morale actually doesn't drop, which could have given me the chance to use that uh, chapel we started from. Gods, have we passed the very threshold into hell? Close ranks. None is to step off the path without clear orders to do so. Okay, so we don't know where we need to go so there's multiple paths and i feel like just going east is going to be the best path for now well the best path in the sense that we're going to do everything we can there's actually wait is this on the map doesn't seem like this is on the map just appear out into nowhere this doesn't seem to go anywhere as well so let's just go north because there's at least one battle over here against monsters so a standard battle, yak yak yak. Meave heard its rothy horse croak, yak yak yak, but saw no evidence of its source. The queen drew her sword and battered away the mosquitoes that swarmed her face. Only then could she see the creature as it emerged from the bog. A water hag, her yellowed fangs dripping with saliva, her tongue writhing like a snake. Oh yeah, another uh, water hag, so let's whack that thing in the face and nip it in the butt. So let's start off with just the Skelligers. Gonna be interesting enough, I think. Um, and then we can... Let's start with a disgraced brawler. Like this. And the third. So we can kill those two immediately if you want to. And I'm just gonna have him damage the Disgraced Brawler a bit further, but... Now, let's first do the Arethusa Adept. 
like uh, do we need to do put that on range? No, we don't need to. Ooh, oh, Lady there we go. Told and us get more of those disgraced brawlers in. That actually boosts the disgraced brawl over here as well, and then we can actually kill those two plumards and damage ourselves by three. And then I'm going to use Meave's ability to shuffle an ally into our deck and see what we can get from that. There we go, back into our deck, and then... You know what? No, let's pick Arnjolf the Patricide as well. So the drummer left, right, and Arnjolf, because Arnjolf's going to be great in taking care of most of those monsters. Okay, destroy the one with the highest power. That is always an annoying one, the Fleeter. If there is a unit on the opposite road, destroy the one with the highest power and self. I can move the fleeter to the other side, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So, like this, swap them all around. Now the fleeter is on the wrong row, it's on the opposite row. And then let's damage it by three again and get the drummer to get an onager out, which you can actually use to kill it. There we go. Like that. We're getting ahead quite a bit. Yeah, there we go. I was expecting a pass there. Uh, we don't really have any Skellige units in our graveyard just yet, but that will soon change. So there we go, won the first round, and I think we'll easily be able to just strain that ahead towards the next round. So, almost there, let's use Meave to get rid of one of the warriors. And then I think I'm gonna play, if I can, play Trinkets. I think I used all my Trinkets. <laughs> Sadly, um, but the Forager will come in handy and maybe even another one. Just, yeah, I'm gonna use two Foragers. So one over here. Can you use this? And then the other one should go over here next to the Warrior, uh, the Brawler and the Hushtook. So let's take those. Then use this Forager to take those. And that gets us 12 damage as well. Then we use the marching orders to refresh Meave's ability. We can pull back another... Uh, well, let's pull back the Slinger. And then play uh, Barnabas and the Lady and Blacksmith. Barnabas will allow Feel us to burning. play a Trinket. So heal an ally and strengthen it by 10, A armor, or return an ally from the battlefield to hand. Let's do that. Uh, from the battlefield to hand, let's do that with Egg. And then the blacksmith the will allow us to replay the Devana runestone. Because I am an asshole like that. And let's just replay... Yeah, let's get rid of three, two warriors. Sadly, no tree because I didn't have enough space there. And then let's kill those two Drowners with the Lance Connect. And end the turn, I have an extra card now, so this is gonna take a little bit longer than I expected. But uh, drain the lowest enemy unit by one every turn, that is nothing at all. Then let's play Egg, because otherwise I'm not gonna have enough space for him. The unworthy shall be punished. Egg on the Catacan. Kill them one go. And the turn. And then the last one is going to have a bunch of Skellige units, which will, oh, firstly be, there we go, we lose our last, our last light infantry unit. And then Dark or Two Blades will allow us to play a full bunch of Skellige cards. There we go, we kill off three Elders. I thought it was going to be worse, but three Elders. There we go, 245 against 26. Victory, Skellige is OP. And there we go, just a bunch of piles of flesh left. And I think that would lead us straight into another battle. I don't think I can pass here now. Because uh, I checked the map out before and I think there's just another battle around the corner. So uh, let's deal with that just as quickly then. Oh, there's a question mark here. Your Majesty, these cocoons, there are people inside, judging by the colors, Nilf Guardians, I'd say. Must have been reduced to skin and hair, the bodies suck dry of their innards. However, a few yet live. What should we do with it? Well, leave them, the monstrosity responsible has done us a great favor. Force freedom and add them to our force. Cleaning duty must fall to someone. 
disentangle their equipment but leave the invaders to die. It's funny that disentangling the equipment also reduces morale. It's a bit weird, right? Because if we just leave them, we don't lose morale. I don't think it's enough, so let's just leave them. Leave them. Let's just leave them. There we go. That was a bit heartless. But yeah, they're, they're no guardians, right? They're the bad guys. We're the good guys. Although I don't think they see it that way. And now we have another monster battle. So let's just jump straight in. Impenetrable fog. The fog grew thicker with every passing minute to the point Meave couldn't see the tip of her own sword. This is no ordinary fault. Fog, she thought, straining her eyes. The screams of slaughtered men at the fore of the column quickly confirmed her fears. So this shouldn't be too hard. Just gonna go uh, and ransack these guys. So starting with a drummer, we're gonna again, keep this simple for now. Uh, a drummer that I can probably put apply impenetrable fog to all enemy rows and then spawn a wolf. And those wolves actually do damage, right? Damage a random enemy by two whenever a wolf ally appears does do the same again. Probably best to start with a Rivian Onager. Then use the drummer and we get... Ah, we get Darker Two Blades immediately. No biggie. Because I'm going to use Meave's ability to pull him back into the deck. And that allows us to play two more cards. Um, let's go with two war wagons. The fog is going to fix that for us. Kind of and in return, like the Rivian Onager will get more charges to uh, clear out the other side of the field. So uh, that actually, the, the, the new ability of Meave actually puts a lot of points on the field immediately. Which is great, because it usually forces our opponent, our AI opponents to uh, drop dead. Next up, I think I'm going to use the Rivian Sapper since I have an Onager on the field. And just use the Rivian Sapper to take Stop out all our light infantry units. I think I'm gonna have to count, so five, well, six is gonna be plenty. So let's just kill them all off. And then four on this guy. There we go. Entire field gone and six charges on the Rivian Onager. I think we have this round in the bag. We're really, really OP at the moment, so that's going to do all that. And I'm assuming ah, he can consume the top unit in the graveyard and spawn a copy of it. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, let's put the Disgraced Warrior down we so we can start clearing him out in a second. And take out most of those Foglets. I well, might as well use every charge. I'm guessing he's going to pass in a second. Nope, nope, seize the damage unit. I don't care about that one, which is fine. Could use a Disgraced Warrior, but first I'm going to use the Divana Runestone on the Disgraced Warrior. And get our three more where those came from. Then we get three more charges on the Rivian Onager, which is enough to take out... For damage, so ten... Yeah, that's going to be enough to kill it with the Warrior. And then three more on the Foglet. Ends the turn. And another Blood Priest Foglet. Hmm. Now the Slinger's gonna come in handy, but first Blood. I can play two cards. The Slinger and the Hushdog. So the Slinger, I'm gonna put the Slinger right next to the Drummer over here. And then the Hushdog in between the Drummer and the Slinger. The Slinger can do four and twice four, like that, and then we can do that again. Best use the same Foglet so it doesn't spawn another one, and then the Regiment Drummer gets us Arnold. <laughs> Fine, so he's in the graveyard as well if you want to play Dogger in the next turn. He's gonna pause. There we go, pass. That is great, so let's pass as well and that gives us the first round and then we can use me uh three times in the next round so we're gonna just skip to the end of that next round see you in a second so almost there we're just wrapping up so xavier on the field no. giving two charges to the slinger and then we can use isbel to do 63 damage which is basically the entire field and end the turn 
And then on the last turn, we'll be able to use Meave's ability twice. That two damage isn't going to do much. If you're wondering why I'm having a wolf on the field, I actually pulled the trinket that allowed me to play a bronze unit from my deck and my opponent's deck, which was great. Now, Meath and Granny Blade, let's pull back that, uh, well, the, 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 Isbel. There we go. And then let's play both Dagur and Reynard, which is going to be a ridiculous amount of cards on the field. So, one, a two, a three, and a four, and a five, six, seven, and the rest goes in the, the slammer, including Reynard, which was probably my own fault. Um, let's see, what else can we do? We can replay Marching Orders. That's, that's not going to really help us out much, is it? Because <laughs> I literally have no space left, unless I start killing my own units. Which is also an option, which is definitely also an option. Uh, so if I kill those three brawlers, I get benefit from that. And that, because we get more boots than we actually lose. Then we can use Marching Orders to recharge Meave, get rid of the Rivian Sapper, a disgraced brawler and egg. Yeah, there we go. Disgraced Brawler, Egg, and kill the wolf. There we go. Pass. And that easily nets us the win. Just one more wolf. And a Katakan. An Akimara, sorry. And uh, now you're coming with that fog, but yeah, too little too late. So more piles of flesh for us to scavenge. And that's basically it, I think, for those two battles. Pretty easy monster battles. I don't think we can actually go into the water over there. Yeah, we tried, we tried, we tried. Let's continue on our way. So leave Iskit. That's basically our only objective at the moment, just to leave this area, which is probably not going to be as easy as it sounds, but a bridge. A bridge with a question mark. Usually not great. While accustomed to life mid swamp monsters and black magic, Angren's denizens never dared enter Izgit. The Lyrians only once saw signs of a human presence there when they spotted a group of thatched roof huts amongst alders. That settlement, is it inhabited? Meave asked, turning to her scouts. Impossible to say from this distance, Your Grace. A professional. The Lyrians entered the village, swords in hand, prepared to fight. But not a soul nor a beast came forth. Some homes had collapsed from rot, while tall grass concealed the paths between them. Yet, someone had been there not long past, for fresh ghoul cadavers lay by the well. Okay. Eve knelt beside the corpse of one cut clear in half. The beast's killer had been exceptionally strong and wielded a razor-sharp sword. That sounds like a witcher. More likely to come around. Meave leapt Ah, there we go. A man in thick leather armor had emerged from one of the huts. Transfixed That's by his cat eyes, of the, the bear, queen right? nonetheless sensed he was rather badly hurt. Were that true, my scouts would have blown their horns. The man pulled out a pendant shaped like a bear's head. There we go. It hummed and twitched as if striving to free itself of its chain. The school of the bear, and who is this man? Go. He said, lips curling into an unpleasant smile. Witchers aren't usually wrong. A moment later, a scream pierced the air. Quickly, instinctively, Meave drew her sword and lunged forth. Here we go. Another battle. We have a Witcher at our side. In the heart of Isgit, the Witcher, though severely wounded, proved far faster than the Lyrian soldiers. His silver sword was never idle, slicing tendons and arteries, finding cracks in the chitinous armor. Meave watched all in wonderment, at least until the ghoul howling behind her reminded her that a queen, that the queen, that she too, must fight. Extra cards and a shortened battle, so I'm guessing we get... There we go, I think that's Ivo of Belhaven, as I suspected. Uh, he's a guardian Gwent as well, so that's why I know his name already. They approach! Seems you were right. There we go, Ivo of Belhaven, immune every turn on turn start, while the blood card is going on. Damage a random bronze enemy by half of Ivo's power. That unit was already damaged, destroy it instead. Wow, that was a lot of boosts. Glusty Warp. Every turn on turn start, spawn a base copy of a random allied unit. That wish destroy three random allied units, then play this unit from the graveyard. 
Okay, so the cluster warp comes back. Split this unit's base power randomly as a boost between all allies. And that which repeat the deploy ability. Repeat the deploy ability. All enemies by two. And split this unit's base power randomly as a boost. Yeah, okay, so that's the same. Okay, that might actually hurt a bit. Uh, what I'm gonna do is... I'm gonna actually play the Disgraced Warrior... You know what? No. I'm gonna play the Aretusa Adept. <sighs> and make multiple... Uh, ooh. I never actually doubled up on the Lydian Blacksmith. That is very interesting. I'm gonna double up on a Disgraced Warrior. And then the next turn, I'm gonna double up on the um, Blacksmith. Because I want to try that out. That sounds really, really interesting. So that's gonna keep happening. Um, the Disgraced Warrior uh, is... On the next turn, but first Artuza adapt with Morley and Blacksmiths. And they get boosted as well. And the turn. Every turn on turn sign damage a random bronze enemy by half five force power. I feel a strong magic here, my lady. Something controls these creatures. Um I think I'm gonna have to go for blood first, because otherwise I won't have any units to actually play around with. So stray slinger and a stray sprawler. There those go. Then the disgraced brawler. King about slings. And the slinger. Well, the other way around. But the slinger. Kill the frenzied ghoul. And the glusty work maybe change rose. And then the frenzied ghoul. Although, you know what? I'm going to have to damage those like this. So I can kill them off with the sapper in a second. Then use Meave. Get the slinger back as he has served his purpose. Let's get a drummer out as well. So Arnjolf. <laughs> and a drummer. <laughs> and then the turn. So there we go. Getting damaged around. But now, if we use the Rivian Sapper. Gonna need, uh, three buckets and we nails can kill the Frenzy Ghoul over here. Frenzy Ghoul over here. Another one. And then four damage on the Glusty Worm. So they're getting boosted multiple times now because of the deaths of the ghouls. Then damage the Glusty Worm by Arnjolf's ability. Get the drummer to get another sling around, which is always handy. Let's put him up top. Use that slinger to swap around a few units. Um... I'm gonna focus on the highest power units. Yes. And then damage the Glusty Warp and the Frenzied Maximum Ghoul over here like that. Send the turn. Slowly chipping away at the power over there. Since a few of them are starting to get damaged as well. What was that? That was by the What was that by the way? So damage all enemies by two. Yeah, I keep forgetting about that. Uh, so that's eight allies. Which means that I can do 8 damage to something if I want to. So, 8 damage on the Drowner. Then we can play the Lyrian. Although, you know what? Let's start with the Devana Runestone first on the Disgraced Brawler. Yes. We get a boost. And end the turn. And there we go, we get another kill off with Ivo, because he killed the Drowner, but that damages all our units as well. But Isbel is getting a nice boost uh, as well, but... Xavier. Xavier or Lirin... No, let's start with Xavier. Xavier, Xavier gets two charges on the Drummer. Uh, we can do nine damage on... Um, Frenzy Ghoul over here. Then use the drummer to see what we can get. Another Aratusa oh, adapt. Oh, Lady Margarita told us of this. Um, further on the disgraced warriors. Why not, eh? There we go. And then the other drummer is another disgraced yeah! warrior with 20 power already. Damage all the elements by two. Now, let's start to get very high the power over here so let's just I want to kill the Glusty Warp but then it's just going to replay it again um, so 
a rabbit Dernig. 10 damage, and now we can use the Disgraced Warrior to kill off the Ghoul. Yeah, let's kill this Frenzied Ghoul. That's gonna give us a bit more boosts. Well, the enemy a bit more boosts. Then, uh, the Blacksmith. Yeah, the Blacksmith. Like this, and now we can replay Blood. No, let's start with the Devana Runestone first. So, Devana Runestone. And we get uh, three more Disgraced Brawlers. They get destroyed, but we get triple boosted again. And end the turn. More boost to the enemy. And Ivo kills one. I think we're easily going to win this, but I uh, just want to play this right. Let's put Isbel... On the field. I hoped we could solve this some other way. Use Arniolf. He can do nine damage by now. So let's just put that damage over there. Use Meave's ability. Yeah, let's use Meave's ability. Get the Rivian Sapper out. And then we can use Egg and Reynard. So I can do 47 damage, which means we can actually damage the Drowner over there. Do need to be careful, because I'm starting to damage my own units a bit too much. Uh, and there we have Reynard, who gets more charges. Now, that still is 8 damage, so let's put that on one of the bigger units. Disgraced Brawler, same, so just bigger units. We get more and more damaged. The drummer I'm going to use immediately, because otherwise I'm going to lose that in a second. And then Xavier, I might give his charge to do the Slinger. The Slinger can do a lot more damage now as well. And do that again. There we go. More damage all around, but now we can use Isbel to clear out the field. And that kills everything. Also my units. There's a lot of my units as well, but... I have a plan for that. Because the more units that are dead of uh, Skellige making... Well, the more space I'm gonna have. Egg is at 100 right now. 104. It would have been even higher if he hadn't actually... Uh, if he had a Manticore trophy here. But, marching orders. We can use Meave to pull back uh, Raynard. And then with that, we can actually get... Um, what's the highest power unit right now? Well, just the Disgraced Warrior and Dogger Two Blades. So like this. Come on, and then Dogger Two Blades. Which just spawns a whole army of Skelligers. <laughs> there we go. And the third. And then the Disgraced Warrior. To finish that all, a whole army of Skelligers at our disposal. Should be quiet for a bit. We also killed Ivo, by the way, by accident. But it's extremely quiet because Isbel just cleared the entire uh, area out. Ooh, magical barrier. The Lyrians emerged victorious, due in no small part to the Witcher. Thanks for the help. Name's Ivo, Witcher, School of the Bear. So. A godless mutant. Uh-oh, yeah, so uh, as I explained before, Egg is no fan of witchers. Egg, I shall do the talking. Meave, Queen of Lyria and Rivia. Well, well. Didn't expect to see anyone out here. And certainly not a queen with an army in tow. We're not here by choice. I bet not. No one plans to pass through Isgith. And you? What's brought you here? A contract, perchance? That's right. Hunting a monster. The Gurney Cora, probably. Um, this contract, who's offered coin? I know your service is to be rather dear. Who could afford a witcher's bounty in these wretched swamps? Nilf Guardians. Blast, of course. Preparing the land for settlement. Cull the monsters, drain the swamp, then bring in slaves. Doubtless from the north. Maybe. I got paid in advance. I didn't see the need to ask any questions. But did you have to take the coin? Don't you see what they're doing? 
Forgive me, your majesty, but seems to me you're confusing witchers with knights errant. We don't fight oppression, right wrongs, or avenge orphans. We slay monsters for coin. And it don't matter whose head's on the front or whose coffers it's from. As I said, your majesty, selfish mercenaries devoid of emotion. No empathy, no justice, no code. Interested only in gold. Hmm. Downright evil to demand pay for the work you do. Okay, indeed. So that's the point of discussion between Egg and Witches. So witches get paid for killing monsters. And of course they need to live as well. That's something to keep in mind. And Egg just does that for free. But he probably does that for free because he has the funds to back it up. So... Nobody's on the moral high ground here. This beast you're out to slay, what is it? Hang on. You mean to tell me you've led your force into Isgith and don't even know what lives here? I believe I was clear. We're not here by choice. Yeah, but now that you are here, it'll take a minor miracle to get you out. Isgith swamps? Realm of a truly dangerous being. Elves call it Gvern Iker, the Bloody Mistress. Over generations, locals twisted the name until it became Gurnikora. Indeed. I've heard it. So you've also probably seen her beloved fruit. Leeches and ticks. You'd all be wise to stay away from them. Okay, so what is it exactly? This Gurnikora? What is she exactly? Depends who you ask. Elves saw a fallen goddess in her. Never managed to cut her down while they lived here. But they did stem her growth kept her from growing stronger. As for the local humans, spirit of a cursed princess, that's their take. Deep belief, actually. Care to elaborate? Stories that she was riding north to marry a Temerian duke. Whole retinue and caravan got lost, wagons got stuck, everybody drowned in the bog. Quicksand got him, that sort of thing. Gurnikora grabbed a root before the quagmire swallowed her whole, hollered for hours. But there wasn't a soul around to hear her. Leeches. Hundreds covered her. Settled in for a royal feast. Sucked her dry. Drained her to pretty much the last drop. Fear and revulsion so completely overcame her spirit, she couldn't pass into the afterlife. So she came back, revived by Isgith's magic. Ugh. A chilling tale. Yeah. Except made up, probably. Don't believe the elven legends either. Gurnikor is a monster, plain and simple. Extremely dangerous, sure, but just a monster. Legends oft contain a grain of truth, your grace. Particularly those that end in tragedy. Okay, simple leeches and ticks. Why worry? The leeches and ticks? You called them her fruit. It's kind of complicated. We've time enough. Hmm. Gurnikor is a little like a vampire. They're kindred creatures. Except, instead of feasting on the blood of others, she feeds them her own. I'm not certain I understand. They're parasites, right? She puts them on her body, feeds them her own blood. Then hangs them on shrubs and trees. Ugh. To what end? To other monsters, their delicacies. Sweet, juicy, full of Gurnikora's blood. Irresistible. Any beast that tastes that loses its mind, turns into Gurnikora's slave. So, if your paths cross and push comes to shove, she's not gonna be alone. Find yourself fighting the whole damn swamp. Okay, so that is interesting, because I know, of course, uh, Gurnikora is a leader in Gwent uh, since the faction, lead, the Thronebreaker update, and her ability is to, every turn she has the possibility to put a fruit on the field, and you can use that fruit to actually power up other, of other units. So uh, that's actually a cool explanation to how she's actually gaining power. So every monster that eats one of her fruits is actually under her control after that. So how do I defeat her? Hmm. How are we to fight her? How might she be killed? It's his bounty though. Sorry, sharing secrets. Just not something we do. Not even with those who saved your life just moments past. We gotta wait till she starts feeding the parasites. She's weakest then. Stand a chance to hurt her. Right. So we attack only once she puts the leeches to her skin. Yeah. And when you kill her, if you kill her, 
Any beasts under her spell will weaken considerably. And then, you gotta burn her corpse. I mean it, understand? Burn it. And you? Will you not hunt her any longer? No, I will. Just need to prepare. Realize that today. Gotta brew some potions, blade oils. Come back in a few days. I don't even have that much time. Nilfgaard's hordes pursue us. I must march on. In that case, wish you luck. Okay. Lots of it. Okay, so that's the end of Ivo then. there's no argument that would persuade you to ride with us. Your grace, mutations strip us of emotion, not reason. Let him go. He'll not be missed, your majesty. He and his ilk, they're simply not to be trusted. I'm wondering if you could have him on your side if Egg is no longer in your party at this point. The Witcher vanished midst the trees. And Meave... Meave simply hoped her soldiers had not overheard any part of their conversation. Okay, so now we have a lot more information about Gurney Cora herself and how to kill her. Which is good. But with that, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And next time, we might even battle Gurney Cora herself. So hope to see you guys then. And uh, thank you guys again enormously for watching. So, goodbye.